with pectus carinatum, we treat um, with braces. So typically we use a brace um, for the upper chest um, and we use this to push in the chest wall over a period of time. But often when you have pectus carinatum, you also get something called rib flaring. And so as you push the upper chest in, and you can look at this and demonstrate it at home, you can then push, the ribs will come out. And so we use a rib brace on the lower ribs to correct that area as well. With excavatum, we use the rib brace over the rib flaring, and then we often use a vacuum bell in conjunction with that over the depression in the chest to pull the chest out. So with both treatments, we train our patients with a really tailored exercise program with our personal trainer and our physio, and we look at um, helping to increase flexibility, push the chest out in the long term, also make the chest much more stable as well. So I think we take a real holistic view of the whole body. So it's not just the, the problem that someone might perceive and come in with of the carinatum area, but we're also looking at rib flaring because when you correct the upper chest, you don't want to be left with two lumps and, and two bony lumps in your ribs either. Um, but you know, we'll also check someone's spine for scoliosis. Some elements of carinatum come with a scoliosis. So we'll treat that with a physio, some physiotherapy input. Um, we'll also look at patients' feet and their posture. And so we'll treat wing scapulars or we'll treat very pronated feet. So we're, everything we're doing is really trying to take a, often a young adolescent patient with some asymmetry or postural problems and bring them up straighter and flatter, which gives them an overall better uh, confidence in themselves. We can make braces while you wait. So, you know, if we've got everything lined up and we know it's happening, you come in in the morning, we take the scans, the 3D scans, we take the measurements, and those go up to the technicians in the workshop. Um, we have a team of technicians making the braces and then by the afternoon everything's ready, we fit them, you go through your exercise program so you can leave at the end of the day with your braces, with the exercise program, all ready to go with your treatment. Um, so that facility is so important to be able to manage long distance patients, patients from abroad, um, but also offer a real uh, all encompassing service. So if there's a problem, we fix it. If there's a, you can phone up at uh, the clinic and you can, we can be seen tomorrow to, to deal with any real issues. So there's uh, many different types of asymmetry with the chest. There's many different areas of the chest wall that can be affected, um, but also there's different age groups and there's different stiffnesses of the chest wall. So um, results will depend on a lot of those factors, but typically in a carinatum patient, which is the most common patient that we see in the adolescent group, we're looking to see results. We talk about a year. Um, in that year, we see the, um, compliance really helps shift the speed of the treatment. So actually within the first six weeks, we can see See the chest become very flat. You take the brace off and you can actually see a real flat chest maybe for about an hour to two hours before it starts to slowly ease out again. Um, we're looking at within three to six months to see a chest wall that stays in position for up to six to eight hours a day. So potentially at the end of six months you cannot be wearing it to school. So um, and then after the eight months to ten month period we're really looking at going into nighttime wear. So if you hit your exercising, if you wear your braces and you're compliant um, and we're not talking about such a draconian kind of regime that you have to wear them all the time. You can take them off your football sport, um, uh, swimming, anything that you you do you should really enjoy your life but you if you should just be compliant with the treatment then we can get some lovely results